Good afternoon. My name is uh, Meher Golshan. I'm the Deputy Chief Medical Officer for Surgical Services at Yale Cancer Center, uh, the Yale School of Medicine, and the Director of the Breast Program. I'm thrilled to be presenting this year at BGICC 2021 in Cairo, Egypt. Uh, the two areas of uh, discussion will be on the management of the in-breast tumor recurrence, and the second is on neoadjuvant therapy and downsizing uh, breast cancer challenges for the multidisciplinary team. Absolutely. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Professor Hisham El Ghazali, who's the uh, founder and director of the BGICC conference. Uh, his visionary work has really made this the premier oncology conference in the uh, Middle East and North Africa, and really truly an international con uh, conference that draws people from around the world, uh, both in terms of the audience and speakers. Um, my first area was on the management of in-breast recurrence. And for uh, most of us, when a uh, woman has been treated with breast cancer, uh, with breast conserving therapy, meaning a lumpectomy followed by radiation, uh, the standard of care has been a mastectomy. And the reason for that is that we don't want to radiate the breast uh, twice. Uh, there are significant toxicities associated with um, doing radiation. Again, there is a uh, risk of, uh, cancer of different sort, not related to the breast cancer, developing with uh, excess uh, radiation. There's problems with wound healing uh, when there is um, excess radiation given. So in general, um, the management, if a woman's had what's called a lumpectomy and radiation has been a mastectomy, yet we have a growing body of uh, evidence suggesting that in a small subset of patients uh, that have been treated with breast conservation, uh, that we may be able to consider doing another lumpectomy as opposed to uh, mandating a mastectomy. Um, I think the easiest group to consider would be a woman who chose to have a lumpectomy and did not have radiation. Um, often we can do a second lumpectomy in that population followed by whole breast radiation. Uh, when there has been radiation given to the entire breast, if there is an area of recurrence, Depending on the size of the recurrence, the length of time from the original cancer treatment to uh, the recurrence, the phenotype of the recurrence, meaning the estrogen, progesterone, HER2 receptor, um, we could consider another breast conserving therapy without radiation. And in certain cases, uh, breast another lumpectomy with uh, targeted radiation. And there are various forms of um, radiation where it's just given uh, to the site of recurrence and not to the entire breast. Uh, yet, if the cancer recurrence is on the larger side, the interval is short, um, the, the phenotype may not support, for example, the use of anti-estrogen therapy, then I think the, the safest uh, route would be that of a mastectomy. Then there's a group of uh, women who undergo mastectomy and they get what's called a chest wall uh, recurrence. In that case, we would want to widely um, excise that area. And if there hasn't been radiation, consider uh, radiation to the chest wall afterwards. Certainly in all these settings, we want to make sure that there is no uh, evidence of systemic disease, meaning cancer that's in other parts of the body that would probably preclude local therapy in most instances. Um, one nice thing to know is that in the modern era with the way we treat breast cancer, that these are really relatively uncommon occurrences. So in breast recurrence after proper surgery where you achieve clear margins, give radiation when, when appropriate and, and appropriate systemic therapy really should be under 5%. And then in uh, the setting of uh, mastectomy, maybe 3%. Uh, one area of um, additional um, research and some controversies, how to manage the axilla or underneath the arm. If a woman has had an axillary node dissection, removal of level one and two lymph nodes, and there's an in-breast recurrence, I think an exam under the arm, a clinical exam suggesting that there's no abnormality, um, then no further axillary surgery is gonna be necessary. There are some women who've had a sentinel node biopsy and you can consider a reoperative sentinel node um, in that case, I would suggest using dual tracer, both technetium and a uh, blue dye of the surgeon's choice. You should, um, the surgeon should be um, understanding that there may be some aberrant drainage of, uh, of the axilla 
yet there is um, growing a body of evidence to suggest that um, reoperative lymphatic mapping uh, may be possible. So again, a really fascinating area and fascinating topic. Um, this area of research of de-escalating therapy, so or maybe not giving as extreme amounts of um, therapy, you know, has a role in drug therapy, and it certainly I think has a role in um, surgical therapy as well. So in the years ahead, I think this will um, continue to evolve. Mm -hmm.